Hello everybody, Bad Weather Freak here. I am good, doing well. Um, I hope everybody's doing well. Um, I know it has been a while since I haven't made a video um, regarding the tropics, but as you guys can know or know, we are not in the hurricane season anymore. So we're in the off season. But nevertheless, we're approaching the 2023 hurricane season. And uh, there's a few things that I wanna talk about um, things that already uh, experts are saying already that we may potentially see for this uh, new hurricane season. I'm going to talk a little bit about what happened in 2022. And um, also something that I'm going to try to do as well is cover weather um, in, in the United States as a whole, even even though we're not in, in the hurricane season. So this is a, a wide range or a wide shot of what is happening right now. If I zoomed in, you can see quite a bit of rain in the Atlanta area, Alabama. Let me kind of zoom in. A lot of showers. And some of them kind of, um, you know, a little uh, a little intense, as you can see. Now, this system here, yesterday, it, it was being watched for potentially producing tornadoes. And uh, my understanding is that it did produce a few tornadoes. Um, so that's why yesterday the, the the risk of tornado was roughly about 50 percent um but this is basically what's happening again metro area of atlanta that's what you guys are um, getting ready to get a little bit of rain uh chattanooga tennessee dalton dalton uh, georgia you guys are also seeing some showers right now and are currently under a flood watch in some areas under flood warning so just to give you a little bit more perspective, Colbert, Alabama, Franklin, Alabama, Lauderdale, and Lawrence, you guys are under a flood warning um, until uh, until noon today. So that's because of those showers that you guys are seeing here. Uh, same thing in Florida, here in Pensacola. A um, few showers also cut rolling in, and you guys are also under a uh, rip current warning and high surf warning. So some of these uh, systems do produce quite a bit of um, surf or yeah surf basically um, or good for surfing <laughs> um, but that's what you guys are seeing right now now as far as the other parts of the United States uh, looks like you get the majority of the United States is good as far as snow goes um, I know you guys have been getting plummet in the past um, in the past days um, you're getting plummet with some uh, snowstorms um, guys up here in Canada definitely um, quite a bit of snow happening in, in winter systems. Now let's move a little bit further west. As you can see here, um, issues with red flag, uh, fires and stuff like that in, in Southern Texas, all the way down to the Mexican border. And, and same thing here in um, New Mexico and Arizona. A lot of you guys are covered under, the, um, under this um, fire and also winter storm which is kind of odd if you really think about it in, in Arizona. And that's something else that is happening here in Florida, that the weather is so different um, in Florida. But for, let me, before I move to Florida, so you guys can see this is another thing, winter storm in northern, central to northern, uh, well, mainly the northern part of um, California. You guys are under a winter storm watch as well. Um, now, a few days ago, even south, southern parts of uh, California you guys got some snow as well now um, here in Florida where well, this is where I am not a whole lot happening just some uh, rip current warnings fire weather watch it's pr very dry so that's why um, potentially you can see some or have some issues here in Florida with with fires and, and you know it's very dry and then also windy that's a recipe for having issues with fires now enough of that. Let's actually um, talk about what I was gonna, what I wanted to talk about. Which again, it was the tropics. Um, I know it's kind of early, but we are getting closer to the beginning of the new season. Right now, what we're looking at is just a couple of cyclones: tropical cyclone Judy and tropical cyclone Kevin. Um, and these are basically out in the um, in the Indian Ocean. So not, not a whole lot happening with, uh, at least in our area, you know, which mainly where, where I report. Now, if we look at the Atlantic, let's take a satellite imagery, some showers in this, in, uh, near the um, um, coast of Africa. 
And um, other than that, just that mess that I was talking about it earlier here in the United States, as you can see in the middle of nowhere in the Atlantic uh, system as well, that you see it this, this spinning um, kind of here. So definitely an issue for uh, ships and, and, and um, also uh, airplanes if they're heading that way. But in the main development region area, as you can see, there's not a whole lot going on. You guys in the Caribbean, Virgin Islands, same thing, not even showers in that area. Now, um, let's talk about sea surface temperatures. Um, so let's talk about El Nino first. Now, remember, um, I've talked about this before. El Nino is basically this area. So let me go back into the, um, let's see, Western, do, 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 Western West, where are you? Uh, well, let's do a, a, this shot here. This is better. So the, if you guys remember this area here, that is what is considered the Nino, um, you know, all this, basically the, the uh, Pacific Ocean. That's what this area is representing. Now, what, what is this basically? Well, as I mentioned before, so these are sea surface temperature, uh, sea surface temperature anal uh, anal anomalies. Zero is basically a neutral year. So you guys have heard of El Nino, La Nina many times. Well, zero means neutral, and then um, the, the negative is La Nina, and then the positive is El Nino. So for us here in the Atlantic, if the, uh, let's say, these, this bar that you see here, this is the, you know, basically how warm and cold the, the temperatures are in the Atlantic, you know, relative to average. So when this is deeper into the minus means that La Nina is stronger. If you guys remember La Nina for us, is, it means it's worse. That's what we have had for the last three years. Three seasons have been La Nina seasons. I mean, 2020 was very, very busy season. Um, last year, we had a couple of, uh, couple of uh, uh, major storms come through Florida, especially Ian, and uh, because we are in La Nina season. Now, that, that doesn't mean that we're only going to get hurricanes on, on um, years that are La Nina, but it can happen in neutral years, so it can happen in El Nino years as well. I mean, 2005 was a perfect example. It was an uh, El Nino year, and we still had storms, many storms. So this is just... Uh, Again, just to kind of show you, slowly as we get closer to the beginning of the season, you see how the numbers are kind of going more towards, leaning more towards a neutral year. But that doesn't mean that we're out of the woods, okay? Now, let's take a look at the, uh, again, sea surface temperatures. My, my concern right now is what you guys see here. Let me kind of zoom in a little bit in this, in this graph. Because what I want to... Okay, let me uh, back off a little bit. What I wanted to show is if you got, okay, this is basically where the majority of the storms for us, it, they do form. Okay, that's what they call the um, um, uh, main development region area, okay? And then, of course, you see, the, and this is what I wanted to point out is this zero is, is no, average temperatures, cooler or, or blue means cooler than average. And as you can see, the majority of the Pacific are, is still, um, that's why we'll technically speaking still in La Nina state, because in La Nina, this is warmer, Pacific is cooler. So right now, especially right off the coast of South America and Central America, you can kind of see how the deep blues are showing up again, which means a cooling in that area. If that happens, then that means we're gonna have potentially another La Nina year, which is like unprecedented to have four years back to back La Nina years. Now, let's uh, go ahead and talk about how, if you guys notice the majority of this here, this area, we're talking about the whole east coast of the United States and the northern part of the Atlantic is, is much warmer than average. Remember, average is zero, and you can see some of these areas have yellows, orange, reds. I mean, the, the higher the, 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 the scale here or the, or the brighter the color, that means the warmer the, the temperatures are. Now this is not good because this means that even before now this is a time where we're supposed we're somewhat in winter, at least here in Florida. I mean I know some other parts of the of the country are in winter, but at least from a Gulf perspective and Atlantic perspective, it's supposed to be cooler than than what it is right now. So 
this is something that we need to keep an eye on because um, if this continues, I remember that as we get closer to summer, the sea surface temperatures are going to continue to increase. They're not going to get cooler um, unless it's La Nina, uh, El Nino year, which here will be warming up in the Pacific and then cooling down in the Atlantic. But so far, that's not it's not pointing or it's not looking that way. But again, this is something to watch for because that will tell us a lot of information. Now, the other thing I wanted to talk about is the early forecasts for the 2023 hurricane season are coming in right now, or they have, they have been coming in since uh, December. But more and more companies, um, they pretty much follow each other. You have the first one to release their good forecast, and then you have other ones doing the same thing. Um, and this is what I wanted to show you because I live in Central Florida, so, um, okay, so I guess it disappeared. <laughs> I'll show you here then. This is basic, This is a very, very in detail information that I will share with you guys. And um, basically what this is, is they have studied a lot of uh, the patterns for what is going on, um, you know, during winter time. And th that way they have an idea what's going to happen, potentially what's going to happen in the 2023 hurricane season so again this is this is basically what um let me go ahead and zoom in on here so this is basically for 2022 hurricane season they call this early where they say basically almost the whole state of florida including the keys except that the panhandle was going to be the hot spot in, in and also including north carolina and south carolina coast well, if you guys remember, this is exactly what happened, which is incredible. Um, you had one storm that came in through the uh, it came in through the east, and then you have another storm coming through the west, which was Ian. And so you can see exactly where, right where they said that it was going to be very probable that we were going to have a hot land spot location or landfall location. Same thing with the Carolinas, the whole coast, and you have Ian and reemerging to. And became a, a, a hurricane again in, in the Atlantic and it made landfall in South Carolina. Now, this is very important because um, they were pretty accurate there. Well, right now, this is what they're calling for. This year, 2023, same, pretty much the same area in the Carolinas. Same thing on the East Coast, but if you notice, now they don't have the, the Florida Keys highlighted and the part of Southwest Florida, which is basically where Ian came through is not highlighted as well. Doesn't mean it can't happen. But again, this is the areas that they are calling for hotspot. So again, from from uh, probably Sarasota all the way up to now, including the uh, Florida Penins uh, Florida uh, Panhandle, is is under that areas to watch. Okay. Now, what is expected? Well, um, this is very interesting. This is the potential return dates of when we may see storms in the whole almost the whole coast of east coast of florida now i would probably pay more attention to the july and the september especially september because that's when the hurricane uh the peak of the hurricane season is and that's the most the, the the biggest chance of us seeing a storm in the east coast of florida again it doesn't mean it's going to happen okay but this is the most probable now if you guys look at the west coast is again july in uh, late August to the first week of September, that's when the anywhere from uh, Tampa to the Big Bend area and all the way to the Pensacola area, Destin, all that area. Uh, that's when you potentially could see a, a storm um, based on the, the forecast information they have been looking at in, in, pre, in uh, previous storms. Now for the Carolinas, you can see again, first week of July, uh, the end of August, that's when potentially we could see something in there again it, it's it's not set in stone now other areas to watch south texas coast as you can see um a little area there to pay attention to same thing up in uh, and these are probable i mean that doesn't mean it's going to happen but now the forecast which is definitely one of the things that i always look for and i'm excited to see they have really west news they have released their uh forecast the average season has 14 named storms, seven hurricanes, three major hurricanes. And as you can see, they are say, they're expecting 14 to 18 named storms, seven to nine hurricanes, and two to four major hurricanes. So a little bit busier than average. And that's the what I have been see, what I keep seeing. A lot of people, a lot of companies, 
they're actually forecasting a, a average to slightly above average um, activity. Again, last year, that happens last year, and look what happened. They, now, it was the opposite actually last year because they called it, it was going to be an ex, a, a potentially extreme or extremely busy season, and we did have some storms. I'm not saying that we didn't, and I'm not downgrading the fact that that we a lot of people were affected and unfortunately lost their homes. But as a, as activity goes, it was below average, basically, or more more. I wouldn't want to say I wouldn't say below average, but more like normal instead of hyperactive season, like some people were calling. Now, an interesting fact as well um, that they were talking about here. After having a what they call a triple dip, La Nina, which is basically three years back to back, the fourth year usually is, is supposed to be neutral or more like El Nino. So in other words, slower. Well, there's two uh, previous instances that that happened, and that was 1957, 1976. And I'm going to show you what happened on those seasons. So let me show you, uh, first of all, let me look up uh, 1957. So this is 1957, and what ended up happening in 1957 after three years of La Nina? Well, you had one major hurricane, uh, well, two major hurricanes, but the, the strongest one was uh, Hurricane Kerry, 140 mile per hour winds. Um, so when you look at the numbers, remember the average 14, seven, and three, this, is, this was eight, three, and two, meaning under, um, you know, under uh, uh, the season, but, Look what happened, 506 direct um, fatalities. So in other words, it could be a slow season, but you get one hurricane and you're gonna get affected. You're gonna get some major impacts where you live. And uh, that's another perfect example is 1992 with Hurricane Andrew, devastated South Florida. It was a very, very slow season, you know, meaning uh, a tropical activity. So let's take a closer look at what happened, and you can see here, most likely this was Kerry here, <clears throat> excuse me, where it made landfall as a major hurricane in the United States. Now, if we look at the other season, which it was uh, 1976. Now, 1976 was actually a little bit more, um, a little bit more uh, active. So let me show you the numbers. Now, um, yeah, was it 1976? Hold on a second. Yeah, 1976. Now for 1970, no, this is Pacific. <laughs> Atlantic, there you go. Here you go. So now for this one, now you can see that the, the activity was much higher. Now you have 21 tropical depressions, 10 storms, six hurricanes, and then two majors. So definitely you saw a whole lot more activity. Now a lot of them were actually in the middle of nowhere but some did make landfall in Florida. I mean, multiple made a landfall in Florida and in the um, Carolinas as well. So again, this could give us an idea of what may we, we may see um, for, the, uh, for this year's season. But again, something we have, to, uh, we have to watch. And just to close off, let's do a quick recap on the 2022, which is a season that we just had. 16 tropical depression, 14 storms, eight hurricanes, two major hurricanes. Again, average is 14, seven and, uh, and two, I believe. So pretty much an average season. Let's take a look at the map. And you can see that a lot of them did long tracks, but they were pretty weak. Um, you can see Ian here. You can see uh, Fiona here. And then you have multiple long, like really, re really long lived. I mean, look at this one. This is Fiona, look all the way up here. So, and all, some of them even made it all the way to Portugal. So, again, we had an um, average season last year. Um, still, 304 fatalities, so definitely something major there. But uh, we can never let our guard down. And anyways, guys, so this is all I wanted to show you. I'll close off with that. Is, um, with that. This is just the first. Uh, now, as we get closer to the beginning of the season, we're going to start seeing more and more people uh, releasing their their um, numbers as far as potentially what we could see. Thank you guys for watching. I know it was a long video. It was a lot of information I wanted to talk about. Um, I know it has been a while since I haven't posted a video. Don't forget to comment, subscribe, like this video, share with your families and friends. And um, other than that, thank you guys for watching and have a good day.